Hello. Thanks a lot for having me here. It's a great honor. Uh, before I start my talk, I would like to ask you a few questions. Did you like my dress? What do you think of it? And uh, no pressure if you don't like it. But if you like my dress, can you raise your hand? OK. OK, great. Some people seem to like it. And maybe you like my necklace. Or maybe if we got a chance to chat before my talk, maybe you like my perfume, how I smell like. OK, before <laughs> this conversation goes any weirder than this, um, all of these creations, my dress, my necklace, my perfume, and even the music that you just heard when I entered the stage are all designed by AI, artificial intelligence, and they brought to life by human collaborators. So before I start to talk about um, how we are doing this, let's first talk about why we are doing this. So I think most of us uh, are now quite familiar with the AI's impact on jobs. It, it is uh, automating many tasks that humans are doing, and it is doing a much better job than us, and it is doing it faster, and it is doing it cheaper. And if you look at the public discourse about this topic, people are saying everything between, you know, uh, it will be end of the human race to summoning the demon. And uh, often when I talk about my research uh, that I did at MIT with people from different industries, they often see AI as something that should be, uh, they, they should be scared of. And they see AI as you know, some kind of black box that they don't understand, that they don't relate to, and um, they are scared of it. And maybe they are right, because you know, people, millions of people are already struggling to find a job, to keep a job, and they are already competing with each other. And now we have this AI thing on top. So I often try to explain them that uh, they can collaborate with AI and they can see it as uh, you know, their creative companion, whatever industry that they are working on. And usually uh, they say, yeah, right. And they, they are still skeptical about it. So a while ago, I started a project, a collective of um, artists, artisans, and scientists, where we try to showcase um, how you can collaborate with AI. And so far, we collaborated with fashion designers, we collaborated with uh, pizza chefs, we collaborated with graffiti artists or bartenders, musicians, and uh, perfume makers, you know, um, playwrights to write theater uh, plays, or chocolate artisans, um, poets, and uh, you know, jewelry designers. And you know, in all of these cases, uh, AI came up with design suggestions, design ideas, and human collaborators use their knowledge, their skills, their creativity to interpret what AI has to say, and then they created these uh, final creations like my dress, my necklace, or my perfume, and many more things that uh, we are going to talk about. So let's first uh, talk about how this dress came to life. So AI looked at thousands of dress designs. So these are the pictures that we gave to the AI. These are collected from magazines from 1940s and 50s. And then AI learned how to create pictures like it. So all the pictures that you see on the right-hand side are created by the AI. They don't exist in the data. They don't exist in the world. All of these are completely imagined by the AI. And then the human collaborator, the fashion designer, look at some of the uh, designs and then she interpreted what kind of dress it can be. For example, in this design, you can see it has a long uh, head and it has some kind of ruffled you know, top and some kind of a skirt on top of a skirt. So this is something uh, that probably only AI can come up with. But basically, our uh, human collaborator looked at this design and then she came up with you know, uh, this imagination, reinterpretation of the AI suggestion. And then she created this final dress, which I am modeling. And she also did one dress for herself, as you can see here. And similar to this, um, this time I designed uh, this dress that I'm wearing right now because I looked at the design and I saw that you know, this dress has one um, 
bell sleeve and then one normal sleeve and it has some asymmetric details and then I actually go ahead, go ahead and uh, make the dress. So this is just one example how AI can help us to be creative and how it can be our companion. And how does it work? Very briefly, uh, there is a very simple but uh, very elegant technique behind this. So think of that uh, you, can, you have two different programs that are competing with each other. So one program, which, is a forge, which uh, I call it as a forger, is trying to create fake images. Like, think of it as it is create, it's, uh, trying to create fake money. And this detective, which is the other program, program is uh, looking at these images created by the other program, and it is trying to detect whether it is fake or not. That's the only job that these programs have, and they are competing with each other. So this forger guy starts with, you know, faking money with like some scribble design because it doesn't know how money actually looks like, and then it shows it to the detective, and the detective says, this is fake, this doesn't look like money. And then this program takes this input, takes this feedback, and then it is changing something in the pictures to test again. So it is changing something, and now it is asking, does it look like a real money? And again, probably the detective guy says no. So this goes on and on and on for thousands of times. And then finally, after this forger guy learns something at each iteration, and changing the, uh, changing the way that it creates the image, it can end up with something that looks similar to the data that we feed to it, and sometimes it is able to fool the uh, detective guy. So it turns out this is a very powerful mechanism to you know, teach AI uh, how to create images like the ones that we feed to it. That's the whole principle. And similar to the dress one, we collaborated with a jewelry designer, and she looked at the image created by the AI, and then she came up with these beautiful um, necklaces. So all the images on the left are created by the AI, and the middle images are the items that we collected from uh, you know, jewelry shops because we look at the images and we thought these uh, items kind of similar to it, and then she came up with the final designs on the right. And what else we can do with this? So we created graffiti designs. Uh, the images on the left are collected from thousands of artists from all over the world. And the images on the right are imagined by the AI. And we collaborated with a graffiti artist. And she looked at uh, some of these designs. She chose uh, something that she liked. And then she actually made the whole graffiti on a um, graffiti street in Boston. But before I show her work, um, there is something so elegant here. Because she's not just collaborating with the AI, but she's also collaborating with thousands of artists who created this image that we feed to the AI. So let's see what uh, she ended up with. So she created this beautiful graffiti. She inspired um, by an AI-generated design, its colors uh, more specifically. But then she wrote a powerful message, completely using her artistic um, you know, uh, perspective. She wrote, no human being is illegal, based on the events that was going on uh, in summer between Trump administration and the immigrants. So, this is a value that only humans can, you know, uh, contribute because she, uh, you know, interpreted the recent events and she used her artistic, um, you know, perspective and she took AI's feedback and she created this powerful, uh, you know, message, powerful art. And something else that we did is collaborating with a pizza chef. So this time, instead of images, AI looked at thousands of recipes, pizza recipes in particular, and then it came up with new recipes. Most of them are super weird. For example, bacon, avocado, and peach pizza, or shrimp, jam, and Italian sausage pizza. Um, because apparently AI brought, uh, you know, a shrimp from um, normal pizza recipes with jam from dessert pizzas. So these are kind of things that uh, AI is capable of doing, making connections between uh, different, you know, data and different features, and bring those together to, you know, inspire us. So our chef made all of these, uh, you know, uh, five pizzas, and at first they didn't really taste very well. But he made some kind of additions and, you know, improvements. And for example, for the shrimp jam and Italian sausage pizza, he thought arugula would fit really nicely to this recipe. And then the final result was much better than the initial uh, AI suggested, uh, you know, pizza. So that's something that, uh, you know, humans are able to contribute and collaborate with the AI. 
And another thing that we did is um, making cocktails. So we collaborated with a bartender in Boston. He is the manager of the Hartorn Bar. And uh, this time, similar to the pizza, we created these uh, cocktail recipes. And then our um, bartender actually made them in real life. And unfortunately, all of them were super sweet. Somehow, AI figured it should you know, uh, put a lot of sugar and a lot of sweet uh, you know, liquors to it. And uh, our bartender is uh, suggesting that we should add some kind of citrus to it. But probably, uh, you know, AI won't be able to uh, acquire uh, taste skills and those kind of, uh, you know, uh, things in near future. But this is another collaboration that we uh, did. And after doing all of these uh, collaborations, we have uh, many more. We collaborated with poets, we collaborated with perfume makers, and we collaborated with you know, tattoo artists, but nobody volunteered to actually get the tattoo in real life. So this project is yet to be uh, implemented in real life. But uh, we learned something out of these experiments. And before I uh, talk about um, my um, you know, interpretation after all of these experiments. Uh, these are my collaborators that made these projects possible. And um, I would like to uh, thank to all of them. And maybe I will uh, reveal something, uh, something little about them after uh, finishing my talk. But uh, I think we realized that uh, humans and AIs can collaborate together to create, you know, beautiful outcomes. And both parties have complementary skills, have something to offer to each other. So what AI has to offer? So AI is very good at, you know, analyzing millions of data points, and it is doing it very fast. And it is bringing, you know, uh, making connections between things that you wouldn't, uh, you know, think of uh, usually, like the, you know, shrimp and jam pizza or this dress. And uh, in another way, if I told you, I find a box. And this box, I'm telling it, I want to you know, dress, um, design a dress. And it is showing me a design that nobody has seen in the world, uh, before in the world. And I shake it, and it is showing me another design. Or I tell it that uh, I want to create a perfume or smell something that nobody in the world has smelled before. And it is showing me a recipe for a perfume. So this is actually AI. So it is kind of a box where we can make it, we can use it to create whatever we want to create. And humans, what we have to offer into this picture. So in all of these experiments, we saw that the outcome was much better and much useful and much more interesting when the human collaborators actually interpreted what AI has to say and they use their skills, their emotions and their knowledge and make something better uh, than the initial suggestion. And maybe AI is going to automate many uh, you know, tasks in our uh, daily jobs and it is maybe going to do it better, faster and cheaper, but maybe it is not a bad thing. Maybe this is an opportunity for us to, you know, step back and let the AI do whatever uh, it is uh, able to do, and maybe we can focus more on, you know, higher level skills. Maybe we can focus more on being creative, or we can uh, focus more on developing our, you know, soft skills, empathy, you know, our feelings or communication skills, decision making and so on. So this is what we are good at. And uh, I see the future where we, like humans and artificial intelligence and machines are collaborating together, not as, you know, competitors, but as, uh, you know, partners. So some of these, uh, you know, um, people here are not actually humans. They are uh, AIs, and their pictures are also created, dreamed by AIs. And maybe you will spot some of them. Maybe it is difficult to spot uh, some of, uh, some others. But here are the AI collaborators. Some of them are our pizza chefs. Some of them are our musician AI. Some of them are our perfume maker. But uh, I think. Uh, even though AI can become very creative and uh, it can, you know, uh, do get better and better, I think they, I think there is a still long way 
until AI can acquire the kind of skills that we have, like creativity, our emotions, and our empathy skills. Because if you think about it, and I might be wrong, because technology show, um, history shows that many people who claim what technology can and cannot do uh, prove to be wrong sooner or later. So maybe I'm wrong in saying this. But if you think about it, in order to acquire these skills, we spent millions of years to evolve and evolve and evolve, and now we feel the way we feel. So if AI is able to acquire these skills in a matter of years or maybe hundreds of years, it just seems like an awful waste of time for us to spend millions of years to achieve the same thing. Thank you.